It's time to make our thumbs a little greener. On today's episode of Wisconsin Wonder Garden, we're here with Pat and Janie with Portfish Aquaponics right here in Port Washington, Wisconsin. Pat is the executive director and Janie is one of the gardeners here helping out on the farm. Pat, thank you so much for having me. It's really incredible what you guys have going on here and it's cool to see an aquaponics center like this and a smaller town. It's one of the larger ones that I've ever been to. I've seen a lot of small setups before, but nothing quite of this scale. So thank you a lot for having me here. I'm really excited to see what we have going on. Well, Ripley, it's a pleasure to be here and to have you come and uh, uh, show the folks what we're doing. Uh, Portfish Limited is a nonprofit uh, organization. We've been here about 12 years and uh, we've seen a lot of different changes. Uh, if you're doing anything in with nature, change is the uh, uh, operative word. Um, Janie is uh, here, you've been about here two years or so, three? And um, we have uh, several gardeners, uh, we have uh, several harvesters, and then my wife, uh, Amy, and myself are the uh, only volunteers. Um, it's a lot of fun, it's good therapy, and uh, let me show you what we're doing. Definitely, sounds good. Okay. Let's take a look. All right. Let me tell you uh, some more about aquaponics. Uh, in aquaponics, uh, what we have here is generally an ecosystem. Uh, aquaponics consists of two components, hydroponics and aquaponics. It consists of three participants, fish, plants, and bacteria. Uh, what you see here are our plant portion. Um, what we have in another part of our facility are the fish and the bacteria. Uh, the, uh, the, whole, the whole process begins with our fish. We feed the fish and they create waste. They create an ammonia and a solid. We take those solids and we remove them physically, manually remove them from the process and in, the, in that uh, process we create a sludge which we use outside. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that with the fish. The uh, bacteria, bacteria are everywhere and um, uh, humans depend upon bacteria. I uh, get a kick out of uh, tours that I give and I ask the question to people uh, about bacteria and how they feel when I first say the word and the majority of them say they feel a little squeamish. Well, the reality is if uh, we didn't have bacteria, we wouldn't be here. Uh, the short story is we're more bacteria than we are humans. Anyway, we feed the fish, they create waste, the solids are taken outside, the ammonia then is in the water and it's, it's being uh, run through the system. We have uh, two bacteria, uh, primary bacteria that will consume the ammonia and then turn it from ammonia to nitrites and then to nitrates. Uh, the bacteria are nitrosomonas and nitrobacter. Those guys consume the ammonia and they convert it to plant food. Um, the plant food is absorbed by the plants. The plants grow, we harvest the plants. These plants are the filter for our system. They are absorbing nutrients from the water. But in the process, they're also absorbing toxins. Uh, the nutrients are the same as toxins in terms of um, toxins, it's what affects the fish. In terms of nutrients, it's what affects the plants. So um, we use these plants to keep the water clean. They bring out the toxins. The water then is returned to the fish and the fish create waste. I'll talk about that a little bit further. But all the plants that we're growing here, lettuces, baby greens, and some microgreens, we use those for our salad blend. That's the main output from uh, pork fish. Three kinds of lettuces, four or five different baby greens, kale, arugula, watercress, um, uh, sorrel, and then 
baby uh, uh, microgreens, uh, sunflower and radish. We combine all those into our salad blend and that's what we uh, use to make our, our revenues for port fish. I've showed you the plants, let's go see the fish. Portfish has two systems, uh, system one and system two. We're standing in system two right now, and uh, I have another exact copy of this uh, set up two bays down. What we do, as I said, is we, we feed the fish. Well, we feed the fish and they create waste. The aquaponic system uh, consists of uh, several parts. We have the fish in these tanks, and this tank has the uh, youngest fish. This tank has the fish that are ready for harvesting. And what we do is we will harvest all the fish out of here. They, they're yellow perch, and they are about uh, eight to 10 inches in size. We'll empty this tank, and then we will do what we call grading. We will then uh, go down to the uh, other bay down there with the next larger fish, and we will pull the largest fish that are available and bring them down here. The smaller ones will stay behind. The objective behind this is to reduce the stress on the fish in terms of eating. If you have a lot of small fish with big fish, the small fish don't do very well. The, this tank is uh, for our, our absolutely smallish fish. Uh, we, uh, we put our runts in here. Generally, people will take a runt and they'll throw it out. It's not worth uh, spending their time on it. But in this particular tank, with all these small fish, there's less competition and they grow. And we, we eventually get them back into the system. We have our fish habitats. We throw our fit, uh, food into the fish habitat. The fish eat the food and they create waste. They create a solid and a uh, ammonia. We separate the solids from the uh, system by these clarifiers. The uh, suspended solids will come through and hit these baffles and then we will physically pump out the solids and put them into this tank where the solids will drop to the bottom. We will drain the water off into the uh, back into the system and then we will physically pull the sludge out of this tank. It's a stinky material. We move it outside uh, into our evaporator. Uh, we do the same process as the uh, Milwaukee MMSD. Uh, where they uh, all the waste from the uh, county, from the metropolitan area, go into Jones Island, and they separate the solids from the water, they clean the water, they take the solids and they use an industrial process to create a fertilizer called malorganite. I'll show you more about that later. But the water comes through here, we separate the solids, and then it continues on. We pump it uh, either outside or into these biofilters. The biofilters are where colonies of bacteria reside. And basically, we're just feeding bacteria ammonia water. And uh, the ammonia then is, uh, uh, they eat the ammonia and it uh, is transferred into nitrites and nitrates. And nitrates are plant food. Now what's this funky looking thing that you got growing out here? Well, you know, if you remember, I, I mentioned a little earlier the concept of malorganite. I gave you a little definition of that. And um, uh, this is the sludge dried out that we bring out here from the fish. The fish uh, create the two wastes, the uh, solids and the ammonia, and it comes in the form down there. It, you can see, uh, if you look down there, it's very sludgy. And um, what happens is we put it in this uh, evaporator bin and the moisture evaporates eventually to something like this. The, uh, the city of Milwaukee uh, County uh, 
MMSD creates the uh, melorganite material and this is basically the same thing. They use an industrial process to create pellets. We uh, just put our uh, sludge in here and we get this material. We use it on our raised beds. It's not a uh, super fertilizer, but it's a very good uh, time release fertilizer for our plant beds. And a great way to recycle materials from the entire process. It's all recycling, yeah. everything. This is an ecosystem. Absolutely. Not only does Portfish grow extraordinary vegetables inside, they also use some pretty interesting techniques outside in some cold frames and raised garden beds. Janie's gonna run us through their beautiful raised garden bed, then we'll talk to you about their cold frame strategy. So outside in our traditional raised beds, these are soil beds that we have outside of our greenhouse. And every year we do something a little bit different out here based on uh, who we are growing for or what we wanna try. This year we have cucumbers in the back, a few different varieties of tomatoes, and several different varieties of peppers that we're growing for a local restaurant here. Um, and as you can see, everything is really, really thriving. And I attribute the success of all of these different things to the fact that we are able to water the things in these beds with the system water from the aquaponics. Um, so they're getting that really good fish nutrient um, as a fertilizer. We do water them also regularly from the hose and they get rainwater and things, but as a fertilizer, we're able to use our system water. And you can see that some of these plants are just <laughs> packed with peppers. I have these same varieties growing at home under similar conditions, but without that fish fertilizer, and I've gotten like three, four peppers per plant, and you can see the difference that that fertilizer really makes. What we have out here right now is what we call our um, extended growing or cold frames where we're using these uh, plant beds, raised plant beds right now uh, during the summertime, but as the weather starts to change, these plants will continue to grow, especially the ones underneath these uh, plastic covers. We call these cold frames. You can see how they open and close to try and retain some heat once it starts to get real cold. The boxes generally stop the wind and the plastic will hold the uh, moisture in. You saw a little moisture coming off of there and that's the extent of it. There is no heat in there uh, uh, beyond the gain that is created by the sun. So um, in uh, November, it might be at 20, uh, 15 degrees out here, and with a sunny day, it's easily 60 degrees inside those uh, boxes. Wow, really incredible for extending your season then. Yeah, it's a good idea, and uh, uh, farming uh, is, is an ongoing thing. It, uh, nature uh, is... Uh, does continue to um, do its thing uh, through that throughout the year, especially at these latitudes. But you have to uh, give nature a uh, an assistance, and this is what is occurring with the cold frames. A uh, Janie will talk a little bit more about uh, the uh, cold frames. Outside right now, you can see that we're growing a couple different types of kale. This is red Russian kale, and down here we have lacinato kale. Um, and in the winter, we're going to be moving all of these from these raised beds outside into pots inside. And we're gonna grow them uh, hydroponically up through um, in the beds. So once we go inside, you can see the aquaponic beds that we have inside and how we're gonna grow them in pots. So inside here in these beds is where we grow some of our baby greens. Um, so these are arugula baby greens here and kale baby greens over here. We primarily use these things in our salad blend um, and they are grown, you can see here, aquaponically with the water underneath and that water pulls up into these soil pots and then we don't have to worry about watering them or anything. The roots from the plants pull that water up through the soil and they just feed themselves, which is really great. This is how we are going to use um, the plants from outside when we transition them inside this fall so that we can keep them growing throughout the season and into the winter. Um, we will plant them like this in these pots and we will move some into this bed here. You can see we're starting to prepare by clearing some of this stuff out to move more pots in 
with the kale and some of the Swiss chard and arugula and things from outside will move into pots and we'll have here growing aquaponically through the winter. All right, well guys, thank you so much for the tour. It was really incredible to see the whole process and everything you guys have going on. I'm really excited for your future of Port Fish. We're gonna have some more videos on the channel in the future for our viewers as well to really go into detail of different systems and more knowledge-based uh, videos that we can really get in depth with because I know there's just so much with aquaponics that we just can't cover in one video. So I'm really excited for you guys and I wanna thank you so much for having you on the channel here. Uh, Ripley, it's been a pleasure. And um, there's a lot to see here. If uh, folks want to uh, get more information, they can go and see uh, portfish.org, uh, our online, plus there's some uh, Facebook connections, uh, Jamie, what do you think about that? What yeah, do they do? definitely check us out on Facebook, and uh, we give some really cool updates on what we have going on there as far as, you know, just day, the day of the day on our, on our Facebook, and uh, what we've got going on in the greenhouse, where we're going to be, the farmer's markets, and, you know, cool festivals and stuff that we've yeah. been participating in. We cool. can't wait to have you back. It'll be cool to do yeah, some more of this. Yeah, definitely. I'm really excited. Well, thanks guys so much for watching. I wish you all a happy gardening adventure, and we'll see you in the next video.